One question we like in Hollywood, we'd like to know how you compare movie working to, say, the concert tour or recording sessions. You know, mono work and stuff like that. Well, we don't compare it much, you know. Uh, would you rather play the Hollywood Bowl again than Dodger Stadium? We don't really mind. Maybe we can um, start another controversy here. One of your countrymen was here yesterday or the day before, before he returned to England, or on his arrival in England. He said he thought uh, American women were out of style for not wearing mini skirts, and that they're, because they didn't wear mini skirts, their legs were ugly. Uh, I'd like to ask you what you think about American women's legs. Well, if they He's don't wear the mini London. skirts, how does he know their legs are ugly? Uh, <laughs> You know, on your uh, album cover that was banned here, first of all, whose idea was it? And second of all, yeah. what was it supposed to mean from your standpoint? What's he say? Can you say that again? <laughs> it's everyone's you know, the album cover that was banned here, you know, oh, yeah. with the dolls and the meat, whose idea was it? And yeah, what, the photographers who took it. And what was it supposed I mean, was we there any meaning behind it? No. <laughs> John, why did you decide to make How I Won the War, minus the other Beatles? Because um, uh, he just asked me. No, and I just said yes. <laughs> and it was just like that. Do you uh, consider that now, uh, since you've been in the United States here for almost a week, that this religious issue is answered once and for all? Would I you clarify so. and repeat uh, the answer that you gave you in Chicago? Again, I can't John. repeat it again because I don't know what I said, you know. Well, would you clarify the you remarks read, that were attributed you know, to you? You tell me what you think I meant, and I'll tell you whether I agree or... Well, you know. some of the remarks attributed to you in uh, some of the newspapers, the press here, uh, said that uh, concerning the remark that you made comparing the relative popularity of the Beatles with Jesus Christ and that yeah. the Beatles were more popular. This created quite a controversy and a furor in this country, <coughs> as you are obviously aware. Do you know that, John? You created a furor. Now, uh, would you uh, clarify the remark? Well, I've clarified it about 800 times, you know. I could have said TV or something else, you know, and that's as clear as it can be. I just okay. used Beatles because I know about them a bit more than TV. I could have said any number of things. Wouldn't have got as much publicity, though. <laughs> my, my, question, my question is directed at all of you. Do you think this, uh, this controversy has hurt your careers or has helped you professionally? Obviously, you're quite aware of it. It hasn't helped or hindered it, I don't think. I think most sensible people took it for what it was. And it was only the um, bigots that took it up and thought it was, you know, on their side. They thought, ha-ha, here's something to get them for. But when they read it, uh, they saw that, you know, there was nothing wrong with it, really. It's just that they thought that by us saying, uh, by John saying that we were more popular than Jesus, they thought, ah, you know, he's bound to be arrogant. And did you see the fellow on telly last night? He said it. Tonight, sure. Uh, I'd just like to simplify things a little by suggesting that the two gentlemen with the roving mics select the questioners rather than me because they can move around faster. So if you want to ask a question, please draw the attention of one of the two roving microphone men. John, what stimulates you in your work? That's <laughs> <laughs> just anything, you know. And also, what's your favorite group in the U.S.? Favorite what? Group in the United States. I've got a few, you know, birds, spoonful, mamas and papas, I suppose. Beach on that side of it, Beach and boys. miracles, etc. on the other side of it. Uh, my question concerns uh, money. Uh, I was wondering if you still have an arrangement with the U.S. Internal Revenue Department to pay your taxes to England through them. Another part of uh, the question is how much money have you grossed in your current U.S. tour, and is it true that oh. you lost? We don't know. Money's got nothing we don't to know do with about us. that. You know, we don't do the money side of it, you know. Uh, Brian does that. And we don't particularly worry about it. tell us what we get in the end. You know. <laughs> the uh, tax thing. We pay tax and things, but we don't know how much or how much we've made or anything, you know, because uh, if we were going to worry about that, we'd be nervous wrecks by now. I'd like to direct this question to Messrs. Lennon and uh, McCartney. In uh, a recent article, Time magazine put down pop music. <laughs> and they referred to uh, Day Tripper as being about a prostitute oh, yeah. and Norwegian Wood about as being about a lesbian. Oh, yeah. Now I just wanted to know what 
<laughs> what your intent was when you wrote it and what, sh what your feeling is about the Time magazine criticism of the music that is being written today. We were just trying to write songs about prostitutes and lesbians, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any plans to do, <laughs> do you have any plans you to can't do use it work on the air separately in the future? <laughs> Can you repeat that question, yes. please? Will you be working separately in the future? Or together? Pardon? It's all together, probably. <laughs> together? Aren't, uh, John Lennon, aren't you doing the picture alone? Yeah, but I mean, that's only in the holiday bit, you know. I see. In between Beetle. Fred Paul from KASK. First of all, I'd like to say hi to you all again. It's That's really great. good to see hi. you. And so <laughs> yeah, <there's laughs> Go on, Fred. I'd like Go to on. ask a question that you've never been asked before. Oh, no. oh. What are you going to do Ooh, when the bubble bursts? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Fred. You know, that's no a personal Fred. in joke. He used to ask it at every press conference we went to, to keep the party going. Do you think we'll have another tour again next year? Ask could be Brian. Fred. Could, could be, be Brian. Does that? Thank you very much. He does a lot okay, of it, Fred. Fred. <laughs> Out, outside in Hollywood tonight, you had to arrive in an armored truck, and the truck was swarmed by adoring fans. What is the situation wherever you go? Do you ever have a uh, an opportunity to walk out in the street without? being recognized or can you walk into a, a theater to see a movie by yourself? If you What's go and the lights are down, you can go in. We can do that in England. It's easier in England than it is here. And it's mainly because we know England better. No It'd better also be easier to do it if we were on tour, you know. Because we're on tour, people know where we are. That's why we have a crowd. <laughs> oh, is that not Paul? Chris, I wear that <laughs> out. <laughs> Paul? <laughs> Paul? Paul? Yeah. Sorry. Many of the top artists and musicians in the pop field today have said that the Beatles have been a major influence in their music. Are there any other artists who have a, an important influence on you, the music you create? Oh, yes. Nearly everyone. You know, we, we pinch as much from other people as they pinch from us, you know. Uh, is it possible to raise the level on the, both of the roving microphones, please? The boys are a little deaf. Ringo. <laughs> Ringo. Oh. Ringo, do you carry wallet pictures of your baby with you? Uh, no. No? Why? I don't carry photos of anything, you know. Thank you. You can remember. Yeah. Uh, may I ask about the song uh, Eleanor Rigby? What was the motivation or inspiration for that? Two queers. <laughs> John, um, did you ever... <laughs> Two battle boys. Oh, this is getting disgusting. in this bit. What? John, did you ever meet Cass of the Mamas and Papas? Yes, and she's great, and I'm seeing her tonight. <laughs> good. Yes, yeah, she's good. Uh, have you ever trained or used beetle doubles as decoys? Uh, no. No. No, no. We tried to no. get Brian Epstein to do it. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, Ringo, uh, one question. Uh, how much did you contribute to What Goes On? And are you contributing to any other Lennon McCartney compositions? I, um, about five words to What Goes On. and not, I haven't done a thing since. <laughs> <laughs> like the dresses to John and Paul. Uh, you write a lot of stuff that other people steal from you and also purchase from you in different arrangements, uh, Ella Fitzgerald and the, a lot of these Boston Pops and stuff like that. When you listen to this on the radio or records and stuff, how do you feel about them using your pieces and changing them around to suit their styles? Depends how they do it, you know. The thing is, they don't steal it. No, yeah. I know that. What is it, you just said they did? Well, some... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, they, I mean, you know, it's, once we've done a song and it's published, anyone can do it. So, you know, the, the, uh, whether we like it or not depends on whether they've done it to our taste. You know, well, then let's we'll ask it this way. Who do you think does it the best, the Beatles songs? Us. <laughs> Who? Us. Oh. <laughs> Uh, for those of us that have followed your career from the early days of Liverpool and Hamburg and the pride in you've been awarded the MBE and the dismay at the unwarranted adverse publicity of late, the question is, individually, what has been your most memorable occasions and what has been the most disappointing? Mm. Well, no idea. you know, there's so many. 
I think Manila was the most disappointing. <laughs> yeah. And mm. the most exciting is yet to come. Uh, gentlemen. Or maybe the most disappointing. Gentlemen, uh, there was quite a laugh when you went uh, on the stock market with your stock. How is your stock doing? Fine, thank well, you. it went down, but it's coming up again. It's gone it went down. down it's it's the same as any other stock, you know. It goes down. down every time, and the LPs drop out. They all think they're buying bits of records. All of you. Leonard Bernstein likes your music. How do you like Leonard Bernstein? Very good. He's, you know, great. One of the greatest. I'd like to direct this question to George Harrison, if I may. Mm. What's your uh, new address? <laughs> <laughs> George, uh, before you left England, you made a statement that um, uh, you were going now to America to be beaten up by Americans. Uh, do, you, do you mean to say in so many words that you feel that the American fan is more a hostile fan? No, not Britain, at all. Or a more enthusiastic Actually, fan? Actually, I, I said that when we arrived back from Manila. They said, what are you going to do next? And I said, we're going to rest up before we go and get beaten up over there. Merely beaten up is just... To, really, we just get sort of shoved around a bit. Jostled. Jostled around in cars and joke, planes. Really? So, you know, that's all it is. Well, do you think that's more an enthusiastic fan than a hostile fan, would you say? I think uh, there's definitely more enthusiastic fans. I but if anyone we have, beat think, us up, it's not the fans, is it? Yeah, the fan thing, I think, they proved it themselves, you know, after this. We found out that there are a lot of fans who are great. Mm. And all the ones we lost, I think, we don't really mind anyway. Because if they can't make up their minds, who needs them? Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the, uh, your image, the image scrimmage. And I'll direct this to anybody. Uh, how has your image changed since uh, 63? Is it... Uh, a little more, uh, is it the same? An image right, is how you see us, so, you know, you can only answer that. You're the only one that knows. Who's that? Oh. It's you. Oh, you. well. <laughs> no, I want to get your opinion. Is it a little tarnished now? Is it more realistic, or what would you say it is? Oh. I know, I have my opinion, but... We haven't but, got any uh, tags for our opinion. We can't tell you our image, you know. We can only, our, our image is what we read in the newspapers, and that's the same as you read, you know. The, I mean, we know our real image, which is nothing like our image. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what I meant to say was... Uh, I like, take two bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the young man with the lengthy haircut to your right rear? Right rear. That's good old Dave, isn't it? Where is he? That's Who is Dave it? Dave from the uh, birds, a mate of ours. Your hoy mateys. Shy, Do shy. Do you ever Hot plan power. to record in the United States and why haven't you yet? <laughs> We tried, uh, actually, but it was a financial matter. Mm, mm. Bit of trouble over that one. No, we tried, but uh, Intel didn't come politics. Up. Hush, hush. No dice. No comment. Mr. Lennon, is it true you're planning to give up music for a career in the field of comparative religion? No. <laughs> is that another of the jokes going on? I'm sure you've all heard of the many beetle burnings and beetle bonfires. And you I was wondering, me. do you think American girls are fickle? All girls are fickle. Well, the photos we saw of them were a sort of middle-aged DJs and 12-year-olds burning a pile of LP covers. Uh, uh, this question is directed to Paul and John. You have written uh, quite a few numbers for Peter and Gordon, and I understand they don't like it because they think that it's you writing the song that makes it popular. Do you plan to write any more songs for them? Uh, they, you know, if we write songs for they ask us to write songs for them if we do it. I mean, they don't mind it. They like it, but it's... People come up and say, ah, we see you just getting in on the Lennon-McCartney bandwagon. That's, that's why um, they did that one with, with our names not on it, woman. Because everyone sort of thinks that's the reason they get hits. It's not true, really. Uh, gentlemen, uh, what do you think would happen to uh, you four if uh, you came to an appearance without the armored truck and without police? We'd get in a lot easier. <laughs> we wouldn't make it. We couldn't do it. It depends, you know. Sometimes we could have easily made it much better without the armor truck. But today, probably we wouldn't have. You think you'd be physically harmed? Oh, yeah, probably. What do you think? Yes, I think so. Uh, could be. 
Uh, gen gentlemen, the uh, New York Times Magazine of Sunday, July 3, carried an article by Maureen Cleave <laughs> in which uh, she quotes the Beatles, not by name, as uh, saying, show business is an extension of the Jewish religion. Would you mind amplifying <laughs> Did she say that? that? Uh, I said that to her as well, no comment. Oh. Come on, John, tell them what you I mean. I mean, you can read into it what you like, you know. It's just a little old statement. It's not very serious, you know. Paul, are you getting married? And if so, to who? <laughs> um, they're probably getting married, yes. But I mean, I don't know when. I've got no plans and things. I want to make these the last three questions. Uh, John? I was wondering, under what condition did you write in his own right? That sort of wild, uh, <laughs> those kicky words. I mean, how did you... Uh, you know, put the piece them together. Oh, I don't know. And do you have any more books coming? Oh, uh, well, um, yes, and I can't answer that. You know, it's just the way it happens. Any more books coming? I didn't think that. How can I do this? Just like an author. <laughs> John. I hope so, you know. John. I don't know. It'll never be the same. I understand there's a suit pending against the Beatles by Peter Best, who claims to be a former member of the Beatles. Is that oh. true? Was he once a former? Uh, I think he's had a few, but we don't bother with those. If, is this the last question? Mm -hmm. Are all of your news conferences like this? No. Well, oh. uh, <laughs> that's not the last I'm talking question. about all of the, uh, all of the reporters, uh, or would-be reporters or semi-reporters that show up. Are you besieged by these kind of people throughout the tours that you travel here in the United States? You can't always tell the would-be's from the real thing. So we Is it know. this way when you travel in Europe? Yes. But what's wrong with the, what's wrong with the crowd? Nothing. I'm just wondering if you yeah. have this many reporters everywhere you go. Oh. Mm. Not always. But uh, some tour. of them are just onlookers. Oh, on tomorrow. tomorrow. Is this is the last question. Thank you. Right, tomorrow never comes is the last cut on the second side, right? Tomorrow never knows. Tomorrow never knows. Thank That's you. Right. Uh, could you give me a vague idea of some of the tape manipula manipulation you used when your voice drops into the track, John? Where, where is that is sung backwards by any chance and then so recorded forwards? No, it's not sung backwards. It's just. Yeah, to do that. It's just uh, recorded pretty straight. You know, there's nothing really. Uh, there's tape loops on it which are a bit different, and uh, the words are from the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Oh. So there. It's there, they nearly. Mm. Oh well. Right, uh, now can we do the presentation that we were going to do slightly earlier from Alan J. Livingston, President of Capitol Records. Uh, when the boys come here, we always take advantage of the opportunity to present them with another gold record. Uh, because there's always one or more waiting for them. There's a little significance to this particular record in that uh, by receiving this, they will have received more gold records than any artist of any kind or type in the history of the Record Industry Association. So, uh, just to that. This is for a revolver. The presentation by Capitol Records is, as I said earlier, the effective finale for the press conference, so far as everyone except the television crews are concerned. May I ask for your cooperation now in clearing the room of everyone except the television crews? Someone ring Mr. Taylor. Someone didn't plug in. Ringo John Paul George. Ringo John Paul George. All together now. Ringo John Paul George. Yeah. Hi, Joe. They've got, got this picture. Yeah. Do it again. Good. Good job. Do it again one more time. No, no it's a promo. Oh, the West Side. Yeah. I just say I'll swell your policeman now. It's great to be. Oh, yeah. 
Pardon? Very tiring. It's not like a plane trip, you know, boring. We've been going 17 hours now. Uh, about once every three weeks. Yeah. Actually, it's cut, you know, you don't really want to see more, but this time you did land. Well, I only saw the airport. That's right. So I've seen more already. Seen it before. Can you direct your questions so everybody can hear them, please? Lady in the hand. Just a minute, there's Derek. A big hand. Why don't you use This is our press. That's it, that's it. We came down early because we couldn't get through to your room. Sorry. Oh. Well, would you like to tell the people that you're sorry about that bust? It's the NES trees right. in the house. Who is your tailor? A fellow called Millings of London. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Millings of London. No, no. Millings. Little back Old street Thompson in the road. Thank you. If you like, you want an extra and make it. Forget it. Now. Yeah. Not you, sir. Uh, Great Pulteney Street in London. He keeps moving all the profit he makes. <laughs> he said. Yes, in February. 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 No, we no, start, no, making, we'll start it. making it then. Steve. I caught the card. No, I don't remember anybody. <laughs> you do remember me? Don? Pardon? I'll frighten where you are. What cage? Here, on the air for uh, <laughs> On the air for uh, Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, old chap. Uh, it wasn't bad because somebody had been up there and tested it. <laughs> In fact, all the press went up and tested it. <laughs> 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 Why did you leave so soon? Mm -hmm. We got told, you know. Well, so people say climb up on the thing, climb on, and then we wave, and then they say get off, you know, and we come down. So we wave. got off, you know. We just We're got off. Oh, we are. Do you think San Francisco is any worse than any other place in the world? No, 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 no. We don't. San Francisco. San Francisco. Were the people, good the crowds that you had, were they any worse? Marvelous. No. Ooh. Very good crowds. No. How do you mean We're worse? Not bad crowds. Why did you start the tour in San Francisco? Well, you can ask someone else. Because I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. We, hello, Silla. We don't plan the tours. <laughs> They're planned for us, you see. Well, we just say, we, just say we don't want to go to sort of uh, Bobubu land well, and we leave the rest. Where is that? Well, why not? So we don't want to go there, so we leave the rest of the world open and it's all planned for us for the hearty healthy. Hey? Hey, hey, jolly good. We do have some, you know, but uh, we, we do have some. some. We just had some before, didn't we, Paul? Yeah, we don't have a lot of the drinks over there on okay, the line. <laughs> Help yourself to drinks, folks. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, Red. Oh, no. Well, I've had a shower, you see, it sometimes goes a bit funny, you know. <laughs> you know, one can never tell one gets under water. Yes, someone. You look too happy when you get off the airplane. If you'd been on it 15 hours, how would you look? <laughs> how would he look, Ringo? Well, how would he look, look at him now? Look at him. <laughs> he looks Pick on me, son. Son? son? Well, he admits his age. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're trying to make some money. Yeah. 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 You said, well, you haven't. John has lost all the to the ballroom. No, I just forgot oh. mine. You know, they got me up to go. Please give me great. They get great. Which one is married? All right, Silla. What? We'll all get married in the end. Will you? In the end. Do you mean you're not funny like the rumor says? Two or three years, <laughs> plenty of time. Lots of rumors in America, yes. No, no. Would you have been on our stage? In our stage? Yeah, yeah I've been on the stage. Pardon? 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 Yes, I wrote all the way over on the plane. <laughs> no, I've written that one. Did anyway. Thank you. I wrote Snow White from the 70 Warts. <laughs> <laughs> Now that you've made a movie, do you plan to uh, do you uh, take the acting uh, bit? Well, we don't we don't profess to be actors like. It's American, like. that John. Dig, oh, dig, dig, man. Yeah. Dig. 
Big baby. Dig your daddy. Oh, I get it. With, with it. Good well, what's the name of the next movie? We don't know yet. When is it coming out? You we don't know. We don't know. Not until February. With any no, not until the yeah. rest of the room. Yeah. Yeah. Long as much. Pardon? Pardon? In, in, in America, it's uh, playing things are tough, boss, and dig, things like that. We change all the time, yeah. Well, what are some of the things that we're changing, you know, yeah. madam. Alec Douglas I don't Hume. really know. Alec Douglas Hume, that's a big <laughs> a one. Very good slayer. Yeah. Wilson, everybody does it. Harold Wilson. Oh, yeah, always. Barry Goldwater was one of the Oh, <laughs> that's a new one over there. Yeah. means drag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it means uh, happy days are here again. No, said he. Said he Ringo, how do you feel about the uh, Ringo for President campaign? It's not a fact here. No, back to the marvelous. Are they having them again? Well, they have them every week, don't they? That's right. I never understood them. Did you vote? I assume you were President of the United States. We don't know anything about it. I don't know, you know, I'm not politically minded. Are you? No, John, believe me. I Politics think you should be president. president. Well, so you're down to Bessie How many other guys feel about Ringo being nominated for president? Well, well we, we think he should win, yeah. yes. We right. think he's definitely in favor. part of your cabinet? Well, I'd have to, wouldn't I? <laughs> I could be the door. Yeah. I'd have George as treasurer. I could be the cook. He looks after the money. Are you going to be visiting Miami again this year? No. Well, not unless it's really. at all. Going to Florida for to do uh, a show in Jacksonville. Yeah. The Gator Bowl, but we won't be going to Miami. Won't be going to Miami. Well, we won't be going. Can't make it this time. I don't know, you know, I don't know where we're going yet. Any more? Plenty more? Anybody? Aye, aye. Uh, you're my girl. Hey, Ringo. Hey, Ringo. Last time I talked to you. Hey, Ringo. 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 Where is that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't follow football, you, you know. don't follow football? No. I don't follow football. Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> you got the message. No. I don't know. Are they winning or something? Uh, we don't like any sports. <laughs> Waste of time. Yeah. Swim. 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 Swimming. <laughs> no, we won't swim. How long have you kept your dad in the shed? Yeah. Well, all the time, you know. Do you keep little notes? Yes, here and there. It's a pole. Show him, go on, you show him. Show him. Anybody yeah, see me? Kelly. I've had him on for three years. Don't keep saying I'm changed. Ringo, can you look this way and hold your rings up? Could you do it again, Ringo? Ringo, could you? <laughs> well, just one one over here. Ringo. Just one more for the East Coast. The East Coast. One more for the East Coast, Ringo. I've got it, I've got it. You got it? Yeah, I've got it. Oh, it's flashing. Thank you, Ringo. <laughs> Oh, for Life magazine. Ha ha ha, eh, Ringo? Life was the big magazine. Oh, I don't know. Well, the wonders never are cease. Are we? Are we? I may try, eh? But I don't possess to be very capable. I know. Yes. What are you going to plan to do in San Francisco other than sleep? Sleep. Just play the cow that's about it. You're not going to see the town. No, we're not going to see your beautiful city. We've heard so much about it. Why not? You can't. Sorry. It would take too much organization, wouldn't it? Oh, you won't see it anyway. Just speeding along with the cars. I do not go home again. I can't go home again. We've been going for ages. Number one. Derek! They're getting out of hand, They're getting out of hand, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to slow down the proceedings while we move the press back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Work, uh, we preach the Bible across America. And what do you have against the Beatles as such here? Well, uh, we read an issue of the Saturday Evening Post, August the 15th, the e issue of 1964, and uh, their press agent uh, said that they were antichrist, uh, vulgar, profane, and uh, rude. And this is the reason you're out here? Yes, we, we believe in Jesus Christ, and we don't believe that the young children should be following these uh, ones that are antichrist and are profane and vulgar. What is your name, sir?
sir. My name is Evangelist Edmund Tiemann. I know she had the word up here, uh, idolatry. What do you mean by that? Idolatry is anything that's put ahead of God, anything that a man worships. Can you believe that uh, the Beatles fans out here uh, are worshiping them as such in, in place of a God? Many, many are, because even as the Saturday evening poster even said, that many even fall out uh, under their presence in that. And this is uh, idolatry. This is idolatry worship. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Okay. This is Larry Kane on tour with the Beatles, reporting from the San Francisco International Airport. Paul, what, uh, what do you on your tour? Uh, do you find it hard to go 30 days and 30 nights like this? Well, this is this is the first time we've tried it, you know, and we haven't done it yet. So uh, I know I met you down in Miami in February. I don't know if you remember. And I'll be on your plane. Sure. I'll be on your plane with you for the entire tour. Larry Kane yeah. from WFUN, and uh, I want to welcome you to the United States. Uh, Thanks very much. The disc jockeys especially appreciate the help that you've given American radio. Thanks. Well, well you, you boosted we appreciate it. That. You know, you brought uh, a new uh, a new uh, let's say wave of music in, and thank you. Thank you, you know, because you've given us a lot of help, too. Thanks. And we'll be seeing you on the plane. Yeah, okay, see. Are you happy back in the United States? John? Yeah, well, what's that? You say hello to everybody in Miami? Hello, everybody in Miami. Tell me, when you go yachting, where do you plan to go in Florida? Who's that? We're going yachting. Oh, I'm traveling. We're talking about yachting. said yachting. Yachting? Yachting. We're not going yachting. You're not going yachting? Just working on this tour? Just working on this tour? No particular outside We've got interest. a couple of days off, which will probably rest in some hideaway. There was only some answer for the bit now. I don't know, I don't know if you want to talk about this. There's an article uh, in a national magazine about... Which one? Uh, uh, the one where you said that about uh, in a year I'll uh, have my money or something like that. Oh, no, right. I guess you've been asked a lot about that. No, I haven't actually, because we haven't had a chance, we haven't had many conversations. Well, that was just something the fellow Al, which I know quite well, wrote in the Saturday evening post. But he wrote that bit, but he didn't write the bit before, which meant that... I didn't mean I'd have money and get out, literally out of the business. I meant I'd have my money and do everything from a different level. Many people in Miami, <laughs> many people in Miami have written that uh, your wife, they want to know when your wife's having her next baby. Many of our listeners. Oh, you see, that's another silly. They seem to have no uh, sort of libel laws over here. It seems the magazines write anything. One magazine called Truth Only, the name of it's called Truth, T-R-U-T-H, wrote a big pack of lies about how my wife broke the news to me about my baby and how uh, she cried and I went off and Ringo said, Johnny must share your wife. It was a pack of lies and some American fans sent it over to me. So I'm thankful for it. Thank you. And it's a lie. She's not having a baby. I imagine this is a sort of... Uh, I don't name any names like Truth, T-R-U-T-H. <laughs> pack of lies. John, we'll see you on the plane. Thank you. Thank you. Good night and God bless you. Hi, Jim. Prior to your show, do you still get that feeling of excitement when you see the crowd? Yeah. The airports and yeah, yeah. we still do. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about these uh, these jelly beans yesterday? Oh, it's too hard, man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 And if you fellas get me, did you get? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I some good sitting thing. downstage. Yeah. Did you get more at the golf tennis than ever before? Um, no, it used to be a lot worse in England. It used to get yeah. millions, you know. Um, I mean, the, the cow palace is so big that people at the back haven't got a chance, a you know, of reaching the stage. Just a minute. But this was the two R, you know. You wouldn't mind. Don't throw them, them Jay Beans, please. <laughs> Give them in or something. If you, we must have them, but don't throw them. Do you think that's a feeling of affection? I don't know. No, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather marshmallows? No, 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 not anything, you know. Yeah, your dreamers are marvelous. We played Australia and they used to throw. Streamers and it was a knockout, you know, because it's just like He's a big in the hotel. carnival, all streamers and balloons, and that, and they don't hurt. Really you had the worst of it, uh, the Cow Palace, because of all of the people standing behind you, behind and uh, you, they were hitting yeah. you in the back. Back as well, so I don't well, have any chance. <laughs> you know, I thought that uh, you had made kind of a standard rule for yourself, uh, especially after the Washington that. performance, the first time around, that you would well, never play uh, okay. when there is a certain no, portion of the audience that is behind right. you. Was that right? No, I didn't make any rules. Uh, I've never heard of it. You know. It's another new thing. Another rumor. Hello, boys. Yeah, that rumor. Paul McCartney just joined us. We wouldn't play anywhere if the, you know, the people were behind us. 
Oh, we didn't uh, stipulate one? anything like that. Yeah. Would, you urge, uh, Ooh, would you urge the rest of the people in the other uh, places you're going to be across the United States to throw streamers? Streamers? Streamers are great, yeah. I love you streamers. want streamers, you'll love yeah, streamers. Yeah, I love them streamers, boy. Because it's such a... Gives, they yeah. don't hurt half as much as jelly beans. Like party, you know, it's marvelous. You don't put anything in the streamer to weight it down. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> what about this uh, comment that I heard about uh, from you, Paul, concerning uh, racial integration at the various performances? We, uh, we don't like it if there's any uh, segregation or anything because we're not used to it, you know. We've never played to segregated audiences before and it just seems mad to me. You know, I mean, it may seem right to some people, but to us it just seems a bit daft. Well, you're going to play yeah. Jacksonville, Florida. Do you anticipate any kind of well, difference in that opinion? I don't know, really, you know, because I don't know what people in America are like, but I think it would be a bit silly to segregate people because, you know, I mean, I, I don't think uh, well, colored like people it. are any different. You know, they're just yeah. the same as anyone else. But, you know, over here, there are some people who We're think that there's yeah. animals or something, but I just think it's stupid, you know. You, yeah. you can't treat other human beings like animals. And uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind them sitting next to me. Great, you know, because some of our best friends are colored people. So, uh, attitude, and I hope that. Uh, well, you know, I mean, that's, 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 that's the way we all feel. You know. That's the way we all feel, and a lot of people in England feel that way, you know, because there's never any segregation in concerts in England, and in fact, if there was, we probably wouldn't play them, you know. Sydney, Australia was the biggest crowd that you'd ever played to before, wasn't it? Um, Except for last night. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was about 12, 15,000, someone said. Did it give you a different kind of feeling playing before 17,000 screaming? Well, yeah, you know, because. The bigger the better for me. I love it, you know, when yeah. it's millions. It's, there's more happening, you know. It's, it's fantastic. And anyway, the noise is all louder, you know. Yeah, the more, going, the more sort of, the more the people in the audience get going, the more we get going, you know. Out of all the records you've made, what is your favourite? Uh, um, I don't know. I think a hard day is nice at the moment. I like that record. What about you, Paul? Um, I think the same, you know, because it's nearly always the, uh, our most recent record that's our favourite. You know. Well, what about? Uh, you mean you're talking about our records? Yes, actually. that's right. Mm. We've got lots of favourites. What do you think about all these uh, groups? Uh Oh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that the orchestration and uh, the Boston Pops doing your records, this is quite an honor to you. Uh. Yeah, and I think Scylla Black's a very good group. <laughs> <laughs> what, one of the what about the animals? Yeah, the greatest groups. Yes, they're very Great good. record. You like that? Yeah. They're nice fellas yeah. too. Yeah. I believe it's number one over here. Yes, yes, it is number one, and they're going to start Mom's. an American tour. It just came out today. Yeah, they're great on stage as well. Are you you know the Rolling Stones too? Yeah, yeah we well. Stones. They're good they're, friends. They're very ours. personal friends of yours. Yeah. yeah. Very good uh, friends. In fact, most of the groups are, you know. I mean, uh, people... We hear some ridiculous rumours over here, no d uh, you know, as you know, but uh, we hear rumours like the Beatles hate every other group on the face of the earth. Yeah, it's just yeah. not true, because all the English groups especially, because just because we know them, you know, are all friends of ours, and I can't think of one group that we dislike, you know. Last, uh, last evening at the Cow Palace, uh, the show was stopped twice to kind of tone the crowd yeah. down and get them out of the eye. We hate them. Well, it's a bit of a drag, you know, because... I noticed that one time, uh, right in the middle of one of your introductions to the song, the MC yeah. ran out and stopped yeah. Did that, did that irritate well, actually, you so we much? told him now, you know, to cut yeah, that out. Yeah. Unless they, you know, they go nuts and start ripping the place apart, which right. I don't think they will. Were you happy with uh, your picture, your first picture, you yourselves? Uh, yes, yes, now. It's better uh, now, we now? Yes, well, we went to see it first, yeah. just about ten of us, you know, it was sort of dead, and we were sort of picking on each other, saying, or on ourselves mostly, saying, well, if I'd have done that, you know, this way and that way, and if I'd have looked, a bit more this way or that way, you know. But when we went to see with an audience, it, and they were laughing at all the jokes, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we enjoyed it, and I was even laughing. Yeah, it's much better with an audience, audience, you know. Yeah. So I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all your personal uh, experiences what and appearances, what was the highlight out of all your appearances in different cities? Can, can oh, you, you it's, it's, it's very hard to answer. Are there any highlights? Because, yeah, you know, there's millions of highlights. I mean, too many, that's why you can't pick on one. I can't, anyway. What's the one city that you're kind of anxious to get back to on this tour? Well, last time we only went to New York, Miami and Washington. So <laughs> we got well, I, fancy too. I fancy seeing New York again, yeah. you know, because I'm... New York. Like, and so Miami's so. great, but we're not actually going to Miami. Washington is... In fact, you know, they're all good in different ways, all the cities of America. Are you really sleeping all day long when they tell us you are? Well, no, we're, we're, we're up now, now. we're, you know. Yeah. What time are we It's all three, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah. well, we didn't go to bed till four. Well, you didn't have a chance to slip out last night, huh? No, we didn't slip out anyway. We just sat in our room and laughed at each other. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, tell jokes when you're in there? No, we, we just had a Just one of them nights where you sort of, you know, sort of, just one little thing starts one laughing, and then we all end up curling up. Yeah. You do a lot of reading in your spare time? 
Uh, sometimes it all depends on our feel, you know. We have phases where we read like lunatics. We, we read a uh, last tour that last was in tour. Australia. We just read every James Bond book out, you know, all of us did. And we were just talking James Bond for the whole tour, you know, calling each other M. <laughs> Bond. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Imagine the tragedy of uh, Ira Fleming. Yeah, uh, was pretty yeah. close to you, I Yeah, yeah it was a drag. Yeah. Uh, you listen to records too? Uh, yeah, when you're yeah. yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Including Scylla Black's new record, It's For You. And it's not, that I'm, trying to plug Black, no, it's not that I'm trying to plug this song, but it is one of my favourite songs. It is, actually. <laughs> Mind you, John and I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah. Do you and John ever have any disagreements? Remember, folks, it's for you. Pardon? <laughs> Do you and John ever have any disagreements as to, as to lyric and uh, the musical score of the song? Um, remember, folks, it's for you. Um, <laughs> pardon? Uh, dis disagreements. Not, not really, you know, sometimes... Uh, if we're writing a song, sort of sitting down and writing it together, then one of us may think of something which is a bit corny, and the other one will say, that is corny. Yeah. Remember, folks, Silla Blacks, it's for you. It's Great, not right. Right. <laughs> Great <laughs> Not corny at all. What's the Send me a copy of that record, Yeah, yeah, I'll send you a copy of that. He needs the money. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, folks, yeah. favourite record at the moment. Your favourite record, my favourite record, Silla Blacks, it's for you. I'm not trying to plug this record. Do you realise, don't <laughs> you? No. no. Beetle uh, people. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I'd never try and plug. Then, uh, have you got a record to plug? It's one of mine. No. I love so many, you know, I can't plug any. I understand Pat Boone. How about Boone plugging was... Silla Black? <laughs> hey, that's a good, that's a good record, record. Yeah. I understand Pat Boone was in town last night to talk to you. I understand him too. We didn't see him. We... I think he's still here, actually. He gave a message to our so. press manager, Mr. Derek Taylor, who passed it on his good wishes. And... How do you feel about the, uh, the fact that a former teenage idol uh, in America now has his organization uh, printing oil portraits uh, oh, of the Beatles? It's a good idea, yeah, I think. Well, you know, <laughs> he's a good business probably yeah. isn't he sounds like a good idea to me actually I'd, I'd never buy one but uh, I've never seen a good oil painting of us yet you know okay uh, the guitar you have right I should say the guitar you're playing has 12 12 strings now, what, before the song "If I Fell" during the act, uh, you, you change guitars. What, what is the reason behind this? Because uh, it's got a different sound. You see, with the twelve strings, it's two sets of each. I mean, there's two lots of each string. You see, only instead of it being tuned the same, they're in octaves. You see, so instead of getting this note, like you would on an old one, you get. So you get, you get and both together so it gives you that noise, you see. It's a higher sound, and with it being electric, it's a good sound, and I, so the ones I've used, um, when I've used this on a record, and I use it on stage as well, you see, that's why I'm always swapping around. Do you like to do a lot of vocalising, a lot of singing? I don't mind, you know, I don't care, actually, what we, as long as I'm on. George, uh, what's the worst question anybody's ever asked you at a press conference? Can you remember, or one of the worst? Well, I don't know if about worse, but the ones that make us cringe most are the ones like, what are you going to do when the bubble bursts? Every day we get that, you know. And <laughs> so you get a bit fed up after about the three weeks of every day, people saying, what about when the bubble bursts? <laughs> and another thing, I notice I've heard your um, your sister in America, she lives here, doesn't she? Yeah, that's right. I remember some, on some programs around America. Uh, does, has she ever been in show business before? No. no. None, of, none of the members of your family? No, my dad used to play a guitar when in the Merchant Navy, you know. Not just for his own amusement, but that's about all. Oh, and I had a brother who was in a choir once, but, you know, nothing really show business -y, you know. I talked to um, John about this, I mean Paul, and uh, I wanted to know, before the Beatles ever came about, before the word Beatles, or before this career ever came about, what ambitions do you have? Uh, did you have as far as a career? Want to be a doctor, a lawyer? <laughs> Didn't want to be anything, you know, because all the time I was at school, I used to just get, you know, get my guitar out at night, and I used to neglect my work at school because of the guitar, and so that was the only thing I really wanted to do, was be able to play a guitar and, you know, on stage, and it, as luck would have it, that's what I was able to do, and it paid off. Didn't have any other ambitions, not that I can recall, anyway. Out of all the uh, English groups, I'm saying groups now that are current, and that came following the advent of the Beatles, uh, that, uh, the first time we learned about the Beatles, which are your favorite groups? 
Um, well, the animals, they're the most recent new group, but they're, you know, a great group because they, they have a good sound on stage. You know, they sound just as good as their record on stage. And, you know, they're good music musically. I like those, and I like the searches because they've got good harmonies. And the Stones are good as well, you know. In fact, there's quite a lot of groups that all we like, you know. Now, I'll ask you a question that I also asked Paul. You know, there are so many young ladies around the world who uh, show great admiration for the Beatles, and uh, many for you individually. Uh, if you had to pick a, a wife, let's say, or a girl that you want to be or your wife, what would be the attributes that you want the most in, in a wife? I don't know. I mean, you can't. You can't tell till it comes along? No, I couldn't, you know. I'll let you know, though. <laughs> no, I, I don't go for this gossip type of question, yeah. but... Oh, uh, I don't mind. It's just like, uh, you know... You can't write down, sort of, say, the ten star qualities you want in a wife. And, you know, you may find you, the wife's different, you know, entirely different to what you originally planned. You know, I, I just, that's the sort of thing you just happened, you know, you'll just know, you know. There's a girl who wrote us a letter and said, uh, do the Beatles ever get bothered by these very personal questions about their families? Uh, and uh, she thought it was very bad for everybody to ask you these questions. And I myself, uh, when I listen to some of the questions at the press conferences and around, uh, I know if I were asked those questions, I wouldn't like them too much. How do you feel about all these personal questions? We, we just had to sort of get used to the, being asked questions like that, you know, because we sit there so that people can ask us questions, and so we'll answer any. But, you know, now nah, it doesn't bother us, you know. What, if they ask us something that we don't really want to answer, we just give them a soft answer, you know, something that... Um, you know, it's something that just doesn't make it personal, if you know what I mean. You know, if they ask something about your dad and you don't want to tell them, well, you just say, you know, just make it into a joke. We're backstage once again with John Lennon, Ringo Starr. Hooray, uh, Ringo. backstage about six hours now. You know. <laughs> and Derek Taylor is with us here. Oh, he's doing great. Say a few words into the you know, yeah, say something. It's been very, very, very gratifying to see that the people in America are so uh, warm and generous without seeking anything in return. All these presents and flowers that come in and nobody wants anything in return except possibly an autograph or two. And uh, I think the Beatles would agree with that, but not always have they met this sort of generosity. But America's been great. Thank you, Derek. I'm sure everybody will be happy to hear that, especially all the fans who do send in things. Ringo, uh, you don't look at most of the presents, you know, we, we get round to them sometime or other, and we open them all, and we're very grateful, and uh, people uh, must, must have been in the magazine or something said, uh, you know, the magazine said I like science fiction books, and I'm reading myself to death. <laughs> You've been um, uh, asked a lot of questions at a lot of press conferences. Yeah. What was the worst question you ever asked? Um, the, the worst, I think when someone um, said to me, um, John, are you going to write another book? <laughs> it's not that it's, it's, it's bad. It, um, I don't know, I suppose. I, I think personally that most people in the country, and especially press people, if they're sent on a job, they should at least lay in our names, you know. Well, that's a rule for every newsman, you know. Yeah, but, you know, and to ask questions like that, and even now, you know, after the, how long we've been here, two weeks, um, you know, we've been on telly in most states and everything, and they still mix us up, you know, which I can't understand at all. Uh, there's Neil Aspinall, our road manager, talking to me. I just took a ride with Neil, and it was very unsuccessful. Where did you go? We went to look for some pictures. Yeah, he's got hundreds of them. Where are the pictures? Oh, the... Did you find the... Was John, what about the worst question you were ever asked at a press conference? Well, somebody asked me. Yes. Oh, hold on a second. Well, I think the one. Uh, the first, one of the worst questions to get asked is... Uh, it hadn't happened so much this time, but the first time we got here, people kept saying, uh, John, do people make fun of you because you're blind or you're nearly blind? Which is a lot of rubbish, you know, I'm just short-sighted, so I wear glasses, but I wear them dark, you see. But the thing is, when they refer, when any of us refer to short-sightedness, we call it blind. Anybody who wears glasses to us is blind. By the time we got over to the States, it was all round that I was going blind, so people kept saying, what's it like, you know, what do the others say? It was all, you know, a horrible question. Didn't like it at all, Larry. <laughs> the thing is, we were only funning, you know, we sort of shout at each other, you know, I mean, we all... 
messing about, we, we argue like mad, we shout to each other, you know, and sort of telling each other off. But it's only in front and we'll say, oh, go away, you blind thing, you know, and they'll say, you know, they'll call me, you know, Snozzle or Big Nose or something. And, you know, we've got names for each other. But, and then it gets interpreted all different, you know, it gets, once in black and white it looks so much worse than the way we say, you know, the, the, the fun bit of, of it doesn't come out. Let's get into another maybe controversial question. <clears throat> when you look at, uh, let's say, young ladies today, everybody says they're trying to get too old too fast. You understand what I mean? Yeah. What do you think about I that? I think from um, girls from, say, 13, to 15, want to look 18 to 20, and then once past that, they're trying to look 13 again, you know, but I, I think it's silly for a girl to try and look older than what she is, and for an older girl, it's, you know, it's much better if she tries to make herself attractive than look younger, you know. What we're talking I'm about, John? Yes. I met a man who went to Glasgow with a bad egg, and, you know, nobody had sit with him on the train. Oh, he's so deep, this lad. That's not deep, Ringo. He's so shallow, this lad. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Just thought I'd tell you, man with a bad egg. He likes to tell people things, does John. Well, we were just talking about, John. Uh, you're married, and uh, maybe someday you'll have a, a young lady for a daughter. Uh, we're talking about whether girls uh, try to get too old too fast, if you know what I mean. What do you think about this? Well, in America, definitely, not girls, just, you know, the ones I've met probably less than the others but uh, people in general kids in general in America are brought up to be it you know 10 year olds look about 16 that's exaggerating say 14 14 year olds look about 18 you know and, and that's sort of you know they sort of bring them up too fast even though they're not educationally they haven't had half the education the most Europeans have had but they look older and they act older I was speaking with Chris Hutchins the other day and we had a little argument about Americans and uh, Britons and their feelings about analyzing things. Uh, I asked him, for example, uh, Chris, what do you think, uh, how could you analyze the Beatles' success? And he said, well, Americans try to analyze things too much and they try to uh, categorize them. Uh, do you ever do this or just natural thoughts come out of you? The thing is, you know, uh, sort of English people or the people I've met around Europe do analyze things, but they don't. They don't say it the same way. An American go into some sort of deep kind of, what do you think is basically, psychologically, the whole business of this Beatlemania? Whereas somebody in England will just come up and say, uh, how did you make it? You know, the same thing goes on all with everywhere we've been, but they'll just say it different. Americans take 10 minutes to ask you, what, did the, what do we think of Beatlemania or how it happened? An English fellow will take about four minutes well, uh, <laughs> another thing, Ringo especially, you read fan magazines and uh, you see, I'm not, a, I'm not a disc jockey, I don't know if you're aware of this, I'm news director at the station. No, we're not aware of this. Get out of the room! <laughs> and, uh, well, and, uh, and, and I'm, a, I'm a newsman and uh, you look at the world today and uh, see this uh, so-called Cold War and everything else. What are your thoughts about uh, a war uh, and the possible military service, if it ever came? I hate the thought you know, of war anyway. And I always think to myself, well, if there you know, ever is another war, but the, you know, you can't, I don't know, this, the next war I always imagine that they'll be throwing them dirty bombs at each other, you know, the atom bombs, and, you know, so if you win, you, you, you know, there's no one can win anyway. Even if you've got a bit of ground left, you've got all that, you know, contamination in the air and everything. You think your music takes away, uh, maybe makes people a little more lighthearted and uh, takes away from all this Cold War fear? Because it's in, it's in most people, you know, the fact that, uh, yeah. well, it can happen any day, you know. I'm sure it's, uh, the Americans are more conscious of the next war than the Britons are, probably, because they've got more power or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or they've got more fallout shelters. But the next, you know, I can't visualize the next war. That's me, me, me John talking. I'm, I'm, I'm just agreeing. The thing is, you just hear about the last war and you think, yeah, okay, they went around battering hell out of each other with a couple of bricks and bombs. But nothing, you know, it happened. But everybody was left. So many things were left standing. But the next war is at the end. I, yeah. I can't really visualize anybody going that potty no, and doing anything, I, you know. I don't know. Only a like Hitler. 
would press a button, you know, and the first one, you know, I, I just think it's stupid war anyway, but to think that anyone would sort of even say, why does, you know, we say Russian and America sort of against each other, I suppose they are, but, you know, they're quite friendly nowadays, aren't they? But the, if anyone ever thinks of a war, well, I do personally, I always think, well, it'll be Russian, Russia and, um, or, you know, the communists against the Americans. That's the way I always feel the next war will be. Yeah, that's right. You don't even feel as though it's communists against English, do no. you? You feel as though it's communists against yeah. Americans. Yeah. That's it. just turn into a holiday resort, you see. No, I'm sure I've got any... Oh, well, well, keep talking. OK, now. fine. We've got another OK, fine. <laughs> Well, nine o'clock, give me a shout. It takes me seven minutes to get ready. I'll time myself. Me too. Do you ever have any, uh, this is another controversial question, is any internal problems within the Beatles, let's say, the four guys? You're bound to have differences. But any serious internal problems ever upset you? Um, we get plenty It's a tough question to answer. It isn't tough because, you know, we can answer it because we have plenty of arguments. But we're also sort of attuned to each other, and we know each other so well through the years that an argument never reaches a, a climax, or it never reaches the point where somebody goes up and says, I'm talking, you know. In other words, it's forgotten. It's not forgotten, but we know each other so well. It's like sort of mind reading. If an argument's building up between Ringo and I, say, there comes to a point where we know what's going to come next, and it's all, everybody packs in, or something... Some, okay, he wins, you know, so we have ordinary arguments like other people, but we don't, there's no sort of conflict. All the people who have conflict in show business either get married about 19 times, they leave the group they're in and go solo, you know, so nothing ever happens. In the group, you know, don't they? So I think that's why they leave, you know, you, in America you get sort of, um, there's a group and there's always one singer and then he sort of gets sort of bigger and leaves, but I personally would hate to leave the other three. You know, I'd, if if it did happen, say I left and went on stage, I just wouldn't know what to do. You know, on my own, I'd be looking around. And the, the thing about that, when I was in hospital and the boys went to um, Sweden and then to Australia, I followed them out to Australia and there was sort of people, you know, at the airports, not that I used to get off the plane, but I was on my own. And I, I, I don't know, just automatically look, looked around for the other boys, you know, you, you just, I don't know, I, I couldn't stand it on my own. One gets reliant, Ringo, that's the thing. Pardon? One gets reliant on the other. Yes. You You're about to go on stage and there is one thing I want to ask, because I'd like to get this in. We're out in Hollywood. We're out in Hollywood and you stayed out in a house out there and you met so-called some of them, Hollywood starlets and actors and producers and directors. Now, to me, this is the first time I've ever been around a crowd of uh, a lot of movie stars, let's say. And to me, there was a basic difference between you, and I'm not trying to analyze, and them. You were natural, and they were not. Especially some of these uh, uh, young actors and actresses who claim to be stars, you know. What do you think about, do you think this world out in Hollywood is phony? No more funny than most of the sort of acting or film world is. Uh, uh, all the act actors and film actresses that are genuine, people know they're genuine, you know, they come across, they're the ones that are natural on screen, everybody knows, you know. But there's so many of them that aren't natural, and that's just the way of it, you know, you get... But we get used to meeting them. We know they're not natural, we know that maybe they're trying to be natural. But they just don't work, you know, they're just sort of phonies. Yeah. 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 We, we met, I think, we didn't, well, I didn't meet too many sort of stars of that in Hollywood, but I think the nicest fellow I did meet was Burt Lancaster, you know, he's, he's a great, and he's so genuine, you know, and he's with his family and his wife, and we went round to see a movie. I think it's even something like he's saying now, like Burt Lancaster's a genuine, sounds like a sort of show business, sort of actors or film stars, cliche, but it isn't. Mm. Because the people we meet and we don't think are genuine, we either don't meet or we don't mention on tape or interview, or we, you know, we tell them that we're lousy. Yeah, but we, you know, we can't sort of on tape mention all them phonies we've met, you know, which none of us like, you know, so we only, the, the trouble with us, in, we only want one great, well-known film actress we met, as well. Yes, yes. She went to the club too, folks. Um, you've read about it. 
I don't know. We'll arrange about the wrong one, but there's one of them who didn't seem to get a mention, although she tried so hard, you see. Which caused all the trouble, actually, because she was flashing around and wanting photos and that, you know, for publicity and that, which is silly. But somehow it didn't work. It due to George's astute business evasion of the he stood up with a mighty blow and swept him from the room. Which any normal fellow would do, you know, but just because George did it and he's in the Beatles, it gets all this publicity. But if you go to a club and there's this little photographer with a big camera and he it's not, no one sort of says, well, can I take one or, you know, is it all right? Or they just sort of run up and put the flash about four inches from your eyes and then flash this dirty big light and it blinds you, which annoys you, you know. Especially when you want to get away and enjoy yourself for a couple hours. It's not so much that. that. Anywhere we go, you know, anywhere we go, we're going to get people coming up with their flashes four inches from you. You take it once, twice, maybe three times, and then you say, OK, uh, whatever your name is, you know, have remember. you done it? You've got enough pictures. You know, we're not going to do anything else. We're just sitting here. You've got all the pictures you need. And you go away, which is what happened in uh, that club in Hollywood. So go away. And he said, OK. So he goes, but he comes back again. So, you know, it's embarrassing for us to ask people to go away because they say, oh, they're big-headed. You know, how dare they ask of somebody yeah. to go away? So the manager of the club comes up and says, is he bothering you? We say, yeah, well, he's just moving, tell him to drop his camera, come over and join the table, anything, but just stop flashing. Both well, of you, thank you very much. Thank you for keeping us occupied all this time. Thank you, Rico. No, it's nice to talk when you're just sitting around. We don't even be sitting doing nothing. So thanks a lot. I give our regards to all the people in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only do press officer on the tours. The Really, I'm Brian Epstein's uh, assistant, but I do press officer on the tours because they haven't got a regular man. During your experiences, uh, you know, we read so much about the Beatles here in America and what they've done and their highlights of their career. What would you say uh, would be the most unusual experience so far? Um, I think the most unusual experience it depends what you mean by unusual, but the most extraordinary experience they ever had was in Adelaide in South Australia when they found a half a million people, all ages and all classes, lining the highway for seven miles from the airport into the city centre to find this sort of thing 13,000 miles from home. And if you can imagine half a million people, it was a, it was a most, it was almost, is the word traumatic? And I think the secondly, and more important to them, when they returned to Liverpool, which is a doer and uh, a very, it's a city which sits back and takes stock of things, to see 150,000 people there welcoming them back is almost like de Gaulle re-entering Paris. One thing I wanted to ask you, uh, what, when you see the American crowds, the American crowds and their reaction. Is there any basic difference between the uh, young men and women of America and their feelings toward the Beatles and the uh, the British? No, they always look very much healthier than anywhere else in the world. The Americans? Oh, yes, and they always seem to be much older than they are, but they're very, very little. They're extremely benevolent and generous, as fans are. And um, this reception yesterday was, was, without being pompous, well up to standard. <laughs> Uh, during uh, your tenure with the Beatles, uh, has there been any incident or uh, instance uh, where I noticed I read recently about, you, you mentioned in a National Magazine article about uh, uh, crippled people uh, asking for their help. Uh, has this been widespread or have you received many letters on this? Uh, there is a, we do get the impression that there is a belief that being near a beetle or being touched by a beetle, this is a minority, uh, is going to do them good in some way. Either they're going to feel, feel better within themselves, or they are actually going to be able to walk if they can't walk. Do the beetles answer all their fan mail? Fan mail? No, they don't. They couldn't possibly. They read a great deal of it. They particularly read it on tour or when they're on planes. They're interested in it because... Um, their view is that people are interested enough to write, then they should read as much as they possibly can. But they can't read at all, because there are tens of thousands a week. 
I know you see all these uh, gifts here and this giant postcard and the big beetle out there. What, uh, what do they do with these things? Do they keep them? Uh, the things that are, are not perishable, the big teddy bears and these, a lot of them they do keep, but what they don't keep, they give to children's homes and that sort of thing. But if they had, if they kept it all, they'd need a warehouse. Is there any apprehension on the part of the Beatles about this uh, uh, grinding uh, schedule for the upcoming tour? No, they just shrug their shoulders as they do about practically everything else in life. They li live life with a great big shrug, which keeps them fairly normal. Derek Taylor, thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul McCartney speaking in this record. You've really got to buy this record. Fantastic. I'm not trying to plug it, mind you, but here we go with Silverback's great rendition of It's For You. Spin it.